Hello Kitty to me because the only thing I know about it is that it's something that shows up on pencil cases a lot and apparently they had an MMO at one point. They have everything. There's Hello Kitty everything. But it's just a kid show. Just your kind of generic, you know, here's happy yeah. people doing fun things and they have personalities. Hello Kitty's the nice girl. Do you not Bad remember Maru like is the Rainbow Bright? Punk penguin. Or, or uh, the strawberry girl. Uh, strawberry shortcake. shortcake. Yeah, strawberry shortcake. Yeah. It's yeah, like My Little know, Ponies. It's just yeah, like okay. harmless. They have little adventures in the end. Except for this one is really more centered around in in Japan is really where she's yeah she's really big yes um, I mean, she's international but yeah, yeah. I mean it yeah. Was, but, but even when we were kids it was it was more of Japan it's almost Japan just like thing. a kid for, well it's more like the like the like the busy world of Richard Scarry you know uh -huh. what I mean. That was the there was the kids book they were uh, British ones but you'd reckon you'd reckon that there's yeah. like a, a worm in an Lovely apple worm. yeah the worm in an apple as being one of the logo characters mm. um, but no like they didn't like f go on grand adventures or anything it was just day to day life yeah. and little mini stories and also I mean the the Richard Scarry thing had these beast people that yeah. I'm not sure exactly what animal they were supposed to be yeah. it's not like anything like Slim Goodbody no not no. like that. <laughs> Hey, yeah, welcome to. The oh. 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 Okay, see, you recognize oh. that at all? Or the, uh, see the worm? No. No. Oh. Well, it doesn't no, recognize lowly worm. I guess not. That's surprising to me. <sighs> Do not recognize it. He's driving his oh. Apple car around. No. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, a series of books, that. and then uh, they had TV shows. But I mean, Hell Kitty was just basically that same kind of I thing. I don't think I ever saw the TV the show. But I had several of the books. The Aardvark. Aardvark. It was not Arnold, right? No, because that's Hey Arnold. Uh, I think there was an art on the art work. I don't know. Hey, welcome to Crippled System episode 236. My name is Andy. Arthur. 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 Yeah. Never, I never watched Arthur it either. Arthur is an art work. He's an art work, yeah. I know. I've, okay. But yeah. Arthur. But you have kids too. How do you know that, not know this? I can understand me because I, I, had, I grew, up, grew up around it. <laughs> but I don't. I, did, did you see Matt Damon when he was on Arthur? No. Matt Damon was on an episode of Arthur, and they decided to make him like a mixture of Matt Damon and an aardvark, <laughs> and so he looked like that. <laughs> That's what you Christ. get when you have Matt Damon cameo <laughs> on, Ar yeah. on Arthur. That wasn't, that wasn't one of the shows that any, any of my kids loved. I mean, I've gone through the My Little Pony and the SpongeBob and the um, Phineas and Ferb. And, ah, Phineas uh, and Ferb, good stuff. Yeah, Phineas and Ferb. That, that was the thing about My Little Pony is I don't understand why people are, are so obsessed on that when Phineas and Ferb is so much better. Somebody, uh, one of, was it Nate White? Maybe. Somebody on my Facebook group the other day posted, like, FYI, if you don't have kids, you may not know about these shows. And it was, yeah. um, uh, Adventure Time was on there, of course. Um, Gravity Falls, which I recommended multiple times mm -hmm. on this podcast. Gravity Falls is fucking amazing. Um, the movie? Yeah, sure. We'll go with, I'll say yes. What? <laughs> no, there's, is there a movie called Gravity Falls? I think there is, yeah. I think it's a horror film. <laughs> Could be good. Um, <laughs> the nah, Dang it, not Star Wars Force of Evil. What's the guy? And then, like, there's all the all the other people are gems, and some of them are lesbians. Uh, Steven Universe. Steven Universe. Yeah, Steven Universe was on there. Um, whatever, there's a lot of good shows. Mm -hmm. Gumball, fucking Gumball. I love, the, I love Gumball. That show's great. I don't know if you've watched that. Yeah. It is just... Do you like regular show? Um, I've watched it a couple of times. But, I mean, this is we we, we don't have the, we don't have the whiteboard yet. No, to, I know, um, but to yeah, list media. I'm oh, talking kids shows. I thought maybe you'd yeah, see regular show. Yeah, why didn't we bring a whiteboard? Oh, I forgot to bring it. Yeah. But Gumball is insane. I literally, it was in my round two, and I was in the losers bracket because Rick's an idiot. But remember Rick's event at um, Last Square? I think you and Jim got clocked because by the master clock because the death clock was fucked. Oh. But he set me up on a table against Jeff uh, uh, Schultz. Yes. And it was a table he had forgotten to set up, so none of the <laughs> terrain was, like, on it. There was, like, some pieces off on the side, and then it was just a three-foot by three-foot blank area, and I was facing Kara Sloan. <laughs> and I got annihilated, and I was like, yeah. Rick, that terrain's terrible. He's like, oh, I forgot to set that table up. It's like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I, that death clock thing, I think, was... Oh, my I remember there being an incident about it. I don't remember the details of the incident. I you remember there being a thing. Master Clock went off, and yeah. you guys were DQ, double DQ'd. For, you, you got a double loss because you had like 10 minutes left on your clock. 
And yeah. he claimed that you guys just didn't start your clock on time, and you guys thought that his clock might have been shorter or something. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. The point is, my round two, the first up on the TV in the corner was playing gumball, and that's the first time I'd seen it. And I literally clocked myself because I was watching the show instead of ma- taking my turns. Okay, I stand by that decision. All right. You guys can introduce yourself. I already did mine. Mm-hmm. Nathan. I'm Dave. Hey. Yay. We have Welcome an office. Gig system. Hmm? Welcome to Fizz Gig System. Ah, I'm Fizz Gig. That's my Fizz Gig impression. I'm just going to leave Arthur right there with, with Matt Damon. He's there smiling at me. There's another picture. That's him and, Ar- and Arthur together. They're so happy. That is... That is <laughs> that, I hope Matt Damon... Uh, he's got kids. He's got to have kids. Matt Damon. So, <laughs> I mean, love the, the, the question f- is, is that... I mean, I mean, assuming those are both characters in the same world, which one of them is horribly deformed? Because both Matt of Damon. them can't be. Both of them... But one of them... Ha- at least one of them has what? to be. Because they don't look like each other. Yeah. That's Yo-Yo Ma. Why is Yo-Yo Ma a rabbit? So, okay. So, what is it with people trying to make character- caricatures of Matt Damon and failing horribly? Because that's how why Matt Damon is Matt Damon from, uh, from Team America. The, from Team America is because they couldn't get his puppet right, so they just <laughs> that's when they just came up with the Matt Damon. I like this description of it. Should we draw Matt Damon as human or as an aardvark? Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, Works but that, that's how the whole caricature of Matt Damon yeah. came about in Team America uh. is because they couldn't get the puppet to look. Right. It just looked a little off, and so they just they rolled with it. They leaned into it. Yeah. <laughs> Go with it. And that's, unfortunately, I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious what his feelings is about that. I, <laughs> he was on the show. Oh, no, not that. I was thinking of Arthur again. I'm sure he doesn't care. He's got enough money. He seems like a cool guy. He yeah. probably thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, we have announcements. Do we have announcements? Do we? We have, Do we? We have some announcements. Do we? We have, we have at least two announcements. Yeah, for example. Exact, example, two-thirds of this podcast is going to go see Judge Mathis. So you might see us on Judge Mathis. Yeah, sometime in the future. We're not litigants. You don't know that. We can make it happen. Hmm? I can sue you. Well, we could. Yeah, and well, we split the money. Yeah, but the thing is that we actually have to file an actual, an actual suit. Yeah, yeah, I already did that. Real, oh. Have you not been served yet? I mean nothing. Uh, <laughs> Make not, sure to say I'm, yes to anyone who asks if you're Andy if Welton. Andy Welton? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not Andy Welton. My name is Gordon Tremesco. <laughs> I'm using your alibi now. That's fine. That was, uh, um, uh, fuck, why am I blanking on his name? The actor uh, from 30 Rock. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got a lady's name. What's the name? Liz Lemon? Oh. Not Liz Lemon. He, he took over Fear Factor. Uh, he took over Fear Factor or is the original of Fear Factor? No, because the original Fear it Factor was, was what's Joe Rogan. Was, was Joe, not Fear Factor. was the other one? The hidden camera where they scared people. I don't know. And they go, surprise, you're on Scary Times with scary Shannon TV? Doherty. No. You said Shannon Doherty. She was the original host. God damn it. It was a hidden camera thing, like Candid Camera. Yeah. They'd scare people. Yeah. I think it's uh, Scare TV. It was not Scare TV. <laughs> it's, it sounds right. <laughs> it's not Fright Show. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I would say. Um, I he just know. like almost died because of his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Was it was it scary? <laughs> it probably was scary for him. Because of his feet. Was this a gangrene I, I, thing? Yeah, I'm curious about this. No, I, I care less about the stupid show that was on Sci Fi TV. Tracy Morgan. Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Morgan. Oh well, he th- he almost died for other reasons other than his feet. Yeah, but he got hit he, by a drunk driver, didn't he? Was yeah, that? but then before that, he like they almost had to amputate his feet and everything because he's he's diabetic. Oh, and okay. he had the hey, my feet are not so good thing happen. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and yeah. and he survived that, and then and then he got hit by a di- got hit by a drunk driver. But Tracy Morgan was is it Fear Tactics? It's Scare Tactics. Scare Tactics. Cop out. He was in Cop Out, no, originally tactics. entitled A Couple of Dicks. That's true. Yeah. It would have been better if it was called A Couple of Dicks. would have been better if it was good. 
and and uh, interesting story about uh, the Bruce Willis and Kevin Smith do not like each other. <laughs> well, that's because Bruce Willis is a really shitty uh, <laughs> actor slash person. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you ever get, to, uh, we have reached peak Bruce Willis a long time ago. Yeah. See, Nick Nick agrees. Uh, scare tactics. It probably is scare tactics. Yeah. Not very good. Well, it was. It had some entertaining things. It's funny. Yeah, but scare it was. Tactics. But <laughs> I've always wanted to see. You know, like how you how you see like the meme videos of like a guy jumping out of the garbage can and then just get socked by somebody. <laughs> I the, I wanted stuff like that to happen on that show, and that never did. It's like they they purposely maybe had a total of like seven people go through their their horror show thing, but the the ones that actually reacted. Defensively, they probably cut. Because I remember, like a lab equipment thing, like some guy running around. Shot and yeah, like well, that. remember Cheaters, where the host got stabbed. <laughs> That's yeah. What? Do you remember Cheaters? I have seen the show. Yeah. The host straight up got stabbed in one episode, just right in the gut, like on a boat. Like they confronted the guy, and the guy was like, "Fuck you," and just gut stabbed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they kept in the episode of him <laughs> bleeding while clutching his gut. They just kept filming it. I was going to say, did that make it actually did that it actually make it to the show? Yeah. Dude, that's that's ratings gold. You do not <laughs> cut your host getting stabbed. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. And I remember if I remember correctly, the host was basically telling us to just keep filming. Yeah. Keep filming. Yeah. I mean, you're out in the middle of the uh, in a boat. I mean, you're not gonna be able to get help. Right then and there, so might as well. That was like Mountain Dew ran an ad in a, with a stunt that was fatal for one of the stuntmen because his mother wanted them to do it. Oh, they're like he died for this. Don't let it be in vain, kind of thing. Oh, was that, no, he would have. He said no, he would have wanted it to to have, to have aired. So go ahead and do it. Yeah, the, uh, Nick had mentioned that there was an episode of the show that uh, where a driver pretended to kidnap a van load of people and one guy. On it was was not with it. No, he was not or, or in on it. In and on he went it, in it swinging. swinging. Yeah, I you know that's that's something that uh, I fe- I would hope if it was a situation like that I would hope I would react uh, heroically. But <laughs> there he I is, mean, stabbed in a boat. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. More likely, the human nature is to just hide. For a lot of those, but I, I would like to hope that I would be able to react hor- heroically in a situation like that. Uh, I am a proud coward. <laughs> uh, I, I'm saying that I, w- I would hope that I would be, but I would oh, probably I don't be, even lie I would to probably be duck and cover underneath a no, seat someplace. No, it's, Dr. Smith from the original Lost in Space is <laughs> like my patron saint. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a scene in, in uh, Snakes on a Plane. When like the the giant like ball like this like thirty foot um, python anaconda that's what yes. like the anaconda's like coming up and this guy picks up a yappy dog like a little Shih Tzu yeah. and just hurls it like a football straight to the snake yeah fuck yeah that's me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm okay I'm okay with that talk about seeing a bad movie in a theater I, I would say are we changing topics. Are we talking about a different movie now? No, we're t- well, no. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, like a bad movie, as in, as in, it's not as in a great movie. It is is entertaining. Yeah, I will. I will. I will right now walk off this podcast forever <laughs> if you de- it, dare impugn the honor of snakes on a plane. No, I, I saw that say, shit opening night. Yeah, there were people dressed up. Yeah, I, there was I, a guy I, dressed up as the plane. I think, I think you and I <laughs> went together snakes to on him. He was dressed as the plane. <laughs> It was. It was probably uh, no. I, I'm not trying to disparage it. How dare you! But <laughs> it was probably one of the best movie going experiences I have ever had in my life. Is going to see Snakes on a Plane. I, I don't know if it, I a think we that, saw it together. We might have. We might have. Um, but it was. Yeah. It was. It was the the audience chanting along. Uh, also God, contains boy. probably one of the best TV edits ever for <laughs> for a voice line. And we've talked about this oh, before, yeah. you know. I'm sick and tired. I've had it. I've had it with these, with these m- monkey fighting snakes <gasps> on, on this, this Monday, Monday for Friday, Friday plane. <laughs> yeah, that's how you replace motherfucking twice. It's okay. with monkey fighting and Monday to Friday. <laughs> that is way up there with this is what happens when you forget a stranger in the Alps. No, when you meet a stranger in the Alps. Let's forget, because it forget? has the F. 
for for fuck. He says sure. forget. I think it's forget a stranger in the Alps. I'll double check. I think it's forget a stranger in the Alps. <laughs> and you I think feed a stork scrambled eggs. <laughs> Feed a stork scrambled eggs. Yep. Uh, uh, but what were you actually talking about? Oh, we were talking about announcements, and we were talking about going to see Judge Mathis. And that's going to be happening on Thursday this week, and I assume that the episode probably won't air for, like, another six months. I watch it every day, so I will let everyone know when when my episode is up. Or they might be able to tell us when, you know, when it's going to be there. Oh, we're both wrong. I, I was right that it's F, it's find. When you oh, find, find, a, a stranger find a stranger in the Alps. In the Alps. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a... It does change the, the whole... <laughs> the whole section of that film for the big Lebowski. It's scrambled eggs. <sighs> There's Math- Mathis, and the second announcement that we have is uh, MuseonCon. Mm-hmm. That's coming up on the 18th. Yep. Uh, the weekend of the 18th, starting Friday, which is, I think, the 17th. 17th yeah. yeah. In the uh, desolate wastelands of Des Moines, wait, no. Iowa. Friday is the 18th. Friday is the 18th? Yes. Yeah. I know because this coming Friday is the 11th. That is correct. Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, I, I, this coming Friday is <laughs> definitely correct. the 11th. The I coming know, Friday I... better fucking be the 11th, or else <laughs> a lot of things are going to be bad for me. <laughs> Yeah, because the tenth is uh, Judge Mathis. Sure. Yes. I love Judge Mathis. But more importantly, the eleventh is my wife's birthday, and oh. so if that was not the day I thought it was, it would be very bad. Yeah, yeah, that would uh, that'd be an issue that you would have to deal with, not us. Yeah, whatever, yeah. fucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's healthy, man. I, I liked how you you worded your uh, your housewarming thing is where your wife is. Turning to age ends with a zero. Yeah, those are the ones you really so, care about. So yeah. Forever 30. Sure. Yep. She doesn't care. She's been using an excuse forever. Like, whenever I, like, I'm like, it's your turn to, like, take a dog for a walk. So that she's like, no, I'm an old woman. I'm 50. I can't do this stuff. I'm like, fuck you. No, you're not. <laughs> like, I will be. It doesn't count. For four more days, her bitch ass can't use that excuse. <laughs> And then MuseonCon. It's yep. going to have events for everything. War Machine, Batman, Hordes, Gill Ball, yep. Blood Bowl. I'm deciding if I'm going to get Infinity. out there early enough for the Champions event or just do the Masters. Masters, is, I think, is on Saturday. Yeah. 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 There will be a snake draft for <laughs> Gill Ball Rob, on Sunday that I'll be running. Probably do Masters because uh, Champions sucks. Yeah, I'm not a I, – I, I, well, I like the idea of it. <laughs> I just – I don't yeah. – yeah. No, I I, well, I I will say though. I mean, I'm being hyperbolic, but it yeah. is less popular. I'll say so that as a factual well, statement. Because season because the ADR roster for season seven is terrible. Season eight, I think, fixes a whole season. Season eight champions, I'm actually interested in playing. Season seven, it's like, yeah, maybe I'll put together a Denny two list or just uh, or just play Alara two because doesn't doesn't uh, Masters use. ADR or if you use ADR, you still get the yeah get the things. Okay. Yeah, but it's extremely uncommon that uh, people actually are. It's it. I shouldn't say extremely uncommon, but it's it's rather uncommon that people actually mm-hmm. take advantage sure. of specialists because the roster is so bad. Yeah, it, it just I I agree with a lot of folks, uh, and I understand why hardcore went away, but it seemed like hardcore was a really big factor in a lot of people's play and i think their shift towards more of a more of a friendly hobby aspect in gameplay yeah that's what privateer seems to be heading towards yeah. and I, I could see why hardcore would go away because i mean it's well i don't even i, I don't even know that there's a that, that that there's that much of a shift for it it's just that with the change to the season eight um champions there's just there's a point to it because I mean, the season seven is. Um, I mean, the, the problem with season seven champions is basically you look at the roster and it's like, oh, Denny two is on here, and most other factions have terrible casters. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like Denny two and Alara two and um, Magnus two, and like those are the only good casters. Magnus two, the original Denny three. <laughs> yep. 
if you replace his model with a uh, dead lady with spikes and leave everything else on the card the same, he was Denny three. All right. All right. I mean, when you like play style wise, he plays like a Denny. Is the point I'm trying to make? That oh, I'm, sure, I'm, sure. You know, like. He he's got the debuff. He's got the the hold you in place feet. He's got the arcing of the attack spells. He was straight up a Denegra with a gender change in the wrong faction. It's kind of like Arcadius. It was it felt felt very Crixian. Yeah. As well. There's another caster that came out recently too. Oh, uh, Cross Cross Two feels like he should be yeah. in in Crix. Well, I mean, in retrib- yeah. I mean, in Retribution, they've called uh, called her Lich Lord Delara forever. No, oh, sure. <laughs> I forgot to read the whiteboard. I'm a failure. Ah, that's fine. That's no, fine. those are two unrelated statements. No, okay. <laughs> I forgot oh. to read the whiteboard, and, and I'm, I'm a, a failure. failure. Oh. No, this, the season eight. The, the season eight roster is chosen much better than any previous ADR roster has. So there's actually because it's actually a lot of instead of all of the power casters, it's a lot of A tier casters. So I mean, I think Champions is a perfectly reasonable format now. Uh, once the season eight hits and for season seven, it's going to be a Denny Tuathon, I think. It's bullshit now that Convergence has two of their casters not on the ADR. It's yeah. insane. I don't know how you can function with two casters locked off. Or at least is one of them Orion out this time? I don't even know. I think Orion's on it. Yeah, it, w- it would make sense, but I know that they changed away from making the new casters automatically yeah. on the ADR. Yeah, but I think they'll still um, be preferential towards having them on ADR the next season that rolls around. Yeah. Yeah. The only yeah, I mean the the only hard and fast rule in the last week in CID is that um, your faction's most recent battle box caster will always be on it. Sure. Um, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys, um, so I ran a poll over on Patreon to ask our Patreons uh, kind of something we should do for, for the next month for content because, you know, we've been lacking in actually putting out other content other mm-hmm. than this podcast uh, and then a once in a while a Lost Aspect podcast if they ever get together. Um, so I only got two responses back from it, but consider we only have... We should t- record a game. Well, that would be that. Would, that's one. We of used them. to do that all the time. We used to do it all the time. Um, season one, season. I can't find a season eight roster or anything. I just keep getting links to season. That's seven. in the. It was a CID document. Oh, okay. okay. Never mind then. That's. So, I think we could tour two for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a battle report for War Machine Hordes. That was sure. one of the options. Uh, a battle report for Guild Ball, which is which is an option. You were to play a War Machine list against a Guild Ball list. That's your twofer? No. Okay. Uh, a horrible movie pain train. Sure. In which we'll follow it up with like a list of movies that we could put in there. Like yeah. like the new Robin Hood film. Have you seen a trailer for that piece of shit yet? No. There's a new, There's Robin, a new Hood Robin Hood film. film. Another one. Why? <laughs> exactly. You know who people don't care about? Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Actually, I cared. I like the Kevin Costner Prince of Thieves one. No, I'm not saying that there haven't been previous. Like, right now, you go ask people in the streets, hey, who should we have a movie based on? No one's like, fucking Robin Hood, man. Yeah, I don't see any Robin Hood, like, gangs in that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, a b- battle report for God Tier. That was another option I gave. Uh, video gameplay stream. So, like, something we'll get together and, you know, do, like, a Minecraft thing again. Sure. Which. I, to be honest with you, that was a lot of fun. It's just time-wise. We can actually do that It took that us now. like two fucking hours to find a mine in Minecraft. And that then, was a then, bad map. And then like 30 minutes of me just fucking around with you and your mine. Yeah, well, because I found an entrance and then you just dug in the middle of nowhere to try to get in a back door. <laughs> and then I demined part of it. And you're like, where the fuck is my entrance out of here? <laughs> it, was, I, it was fun. I named uh, the mine like Sebastian or something. Yeah. Yeah, you did, because it was in the middle. You were watching. It's a good name that. for a mine. Okay. And then a full-on drunk cast. So there's only two people that voted, so one is a full-on drunk cast. Sure. And the other one is a horrible movie pain train. Sure. So we could probably just go movie pain train, record pain train as we're drinking, and then do a podcast right afterwards. Well, because I used to do full-on drunk video game recording all the time. <laughs> yeah. We could just add drinking to any of the options there, too, and I would be fine with that. We don't have somebody on the podcast that's no longer uh, abhorrent of drinking. Oh, yeah, I never yeah. Did I, I didn't use that word right. You did. I did? Okay. Kind of. Well, 
who finds drinking abhorrent. Yeah. Use yes. it backwards, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah no, I, keep I don't. I don't think drinking has a severe problem with anybody that's been on the podcast. You, it might. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about doing another uh, uh, if, an updated faction thing. Oh, okay. remember like I did for minions yeah. and, and whatnot in Mark Two. Where I, I went through the worth, entire faction. Yeah, I think that would be worth doing. Yeah, and I got reasonably drunk doing that. I did not get... Jeremy got annihilated doing <laughs> Legion. He was destroyed. It would <laughs> it would almost be worth it to see if we could try to get Jeremy to come in and do a faction. I mean, he's been out of the game for well over a year to... to <laughs> to, to give him, he'll just give his react. Him. Like he'll read it and go, "That's unplayable trash." Yeah, <laughs> I'd be fine with that too. Because you know, literally, Jeremy anything. is kind of fun. Oh, <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of is a little obnoxious. <laughs> well, sober Jeremy is obnoxious, so <laughs> the drunk had no effect on that. <laughs> so hopefully, I mean, I mean, so that's, I mean, the. The the poll is going to go out live. I just put it to our, our Patreons. I don't know if they actually got notified for it. Uh, um, yeah, put, yeah, put recorded games and drunk faction overview. Mm-hmm. I like both of those ideas. You don't want to do a horrible movie paint train? Oh, you can do that too. Yeah. I, I did, Honestly, when I was making the poll, I just got done watching the, the trailer for... For the new Robin Hood, it's fucking really why I, I don't understand it because I mean because didn't uh, what's his name uh, the the heavy one from Gladiator now he is heavy now <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you think with the ladies like are you gonna save that for your next divorce <laughs> he was on like an Australian TV like show because he's selling a bunch of his stuff to pay for a divorce and uh, okay. he pointed a thing that he wasn't gonna sell and she's like oh, are you saving that for your next divorce <laughs> like man harsh. Why can't I not think of his name? Russell uh, Crowe. Russell Crowe, yes. Because uh, we just had a Robin Hood with him, and that's like, that's within five years, I think. Was it? No, I think it was longer than that. I can double check, but well, you got Jamie Foxx as Little John? <laughs> what? Well, that's fine. I don't, I don't no, care. No, I like Jamie Foxx just fine, but like Little John, like the Little is supposed to be ironic? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I liked. I liked. The, probably my favorite little John is the little John with his pimp cup and no, but <laughs> my favorite little John is. <laughs> See, he should have been in this. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> my John favorite impression. is uh, uh, Michael McShane. I think it is. Uh, he was Friar Tuck, not Little John. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the, yes. Okay. Yeah. But Friar, I am a Friar big Tuck. Mike McShane fan. Yes. Uh, oh. Always loved him in the original. Um, whose line is it anyway? The British one. Yep. He was in Office Space as well. He was a doctor. He needs to be in more shit because he is awesome. Oh, the guy from uh, Kingpin, uh, Kingsman. <laughs> Kingpin. Kingsman. The guy from Kingsman is Robin Hood. Yeah. He's got tertiary billing. He's below Little John and Will Scarlet. Yeah, I just... Uh, there's there's no reason to make it. And they're making it as like a giant action film. And they already have in the trailer itself a, a, a big spoiler of the film. Like, come on. I mean, that's what that's what trailers do. Yeah. Unlike the Infinity War trailer, I liked their their uh, marketing with that. That they made shit up. Uh, it was yep. 2010 is when his Robin Hood came out. It's really not that long ago. At least it doesn't feel like that long ago. Because we're getting old. He ballooned up really recently because he was not that big in Nice Guys, and that was only in 2016. I had a... I didn't like Nice Guys... It might have been the company I saw it with. Man, you keep pushing shit today. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nice Guys is vastly worse than the exact same film by the exact same director, which was Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Never seen it. <laughs> At least we you didn't say you didn't like it. We had this discussion before. I haven't seen it either, so. <laughs> oh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is legit one of the greatest films ever made. It is a... S- <laughs> Astoundingly good. What's it about? It is like a um, detective thing that subverts the fuck out of detective thing. It's. Okay. It, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It is so good. It is Robert Downey Jr. before he was resurged with Iron Man, so he was still doing like little indie stuff, and he is amazing in that. Val Kilmer's amazing in that. <laughs> He's got just great dialogue. Like Val Kilmer's talking to, to um, 
uh, Iron Man, and he's like, you know what you'll find if you look up the definition of the word idiot in the dictionary? And he's like, oh, and a picture of me? He's like, no, you'll find the definition of the word idiot, which you fucking are. <laughs> it's like, that's dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, need to, I need to see it. I just haven't. Uh... I always like when people are accidentally shot in the face. Oh, Nick was asking if a 5 a.m. Fortress America recording one uh, for a, an, an option on the poll. I'll, yeah, that's fine. I mean, we did we did a 2 a.m. Was it 2 a.m.? 2 or 3. It was, it was something like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to, to go and play Fortress America at Nathan's. Yeah, that's a good game, too. It was a nail-biter. It was, yeah. It I, came down to, like, one die roll. Like, if I'd hit one more time with my lasers, I could have stopped you guys. But it, it missed, and, yeah. I don't remember the end. It's a good game. It. No, that I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you told me what happened. So if I watched it, it'd be amazing. But didn't have very good recording on that. Well, we're working on getting better equipment. It was very it. Blair Witchy. It was the handheld gorilla camera. <laughs> that was the best part, though. Was was the shot of Nathan getting up out of bed. I was confused. <laughs> we stormed his bedroom. Stormed his bedroom. Hey, Nathan! Nathan, get up! And then like, oh, oh, what? What? It was great because they they're like they powder them like Nathan wake up go, blah, blah. they go you want to play Fortune America I go yeah okay because <laughs> that will always be my answer oh that was great because that Raylene was completely in on that too there's like three or four board games I will never say no to what are the other ones uh, the most recent ad uh, entry is uh, Three Kingdoms Redo or Redux. I, I, I think it should be pronounced redo. I think the X should be silent, but With, apparently it's redux. It's got ducks in it? Yeah. Uh, Just uh, three ducks in a kingdom? So, like, no. there's like a mallard, there's, you know, a wood duck, and uh, what's well, another duck? It was another all duck. mallards. Oh, okay. But it didn't work out, which is why it has to be redux. Oh. They have to go through a second time putting different ducks into there. Okay. Yeah. I'm having a hard time thinking of another duck. There's uh, Huey. No, no, <laughs> screw those. There's Dewey. No. There's Louie. They don't wear pants. What the fuck is wrong with the duck family? Uh, would you wear pants if you didn't have to? I, I, so they are blessed enough to live in a place where pantsless living is accepted. True. So if I lived in Deckburg, I'd be freeballing it all the time. <laughs> hmm. Save money, keep cool. No, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> Fair. I mean, Launchpad wears pants. Yeah, maybe something's wrong with him. Like, of all the characters on those shows, Launchpad's the one you're going to say is the sane one? Uh, well, not the sane Well, he, He's at least the one wearing pants. Okay, are you saying that he's insane and that's why wearing pants is crazy? Yeah. In the, in the, in the DuckTales world? Every character on that show doesn't wear pants except Launchpad McQuack, who is the dumb one. Like, and then you got one other person wearing a kilt. And the ladies have dresses, but their dresses end at, like, the equivalent of their waist. <laughs> so it's more like tube tops. No, the dresses, they go down. They go down. Their oh. tails are hanging out the back. Like, their booties are just hanging out the back of those dresses. They don't go down to their legs. Hmm. You are right. I'm trying to think of my, my mind of, of ducktails. So you're going to be looking up ducktails now? I was I was just gonna was her name Morgana Macab was that the the evil one oh the the, the, the witch yeah. on Ducktales yep oh it's not it's not that game up. is amazing by the way too and the remaster is pretty goddamn good oh yeah that game was great have you did you get a chance to play the remaster of it I've not played the remaster it is worth every dime every dime you put into it because it is. It plays exactly like the Capcom version, like the the old mm -hmm. school DuckTales. Her name was Magica Dispel. That's a lame name. Uh, was the one? Well, I was mixing up because Morgana Macabre. Yeah, yeah that's Magica Dispel. I was thinking that was Morgana Macabre, mm -hmm. but apparently Morgana Macabre was Darkwing's uh, Elvira ripoff girlfriend. Mm. So she was the good witch, whereas Magica Dispel was the bad witch. There's no Count Duckula. No. He won't bite a piece of man because he's a vegetarian. <laughs> That's from the theme song to Count Duckula. Yeah. Do you remember Dark Count Duckula now? I remember Count Duckula, yes. Do you remember what show he was attached to? Um, 
Is that Darkwing Duck? No. No, because Count Duckula is a British one. Yep. It that, starred. It started. I would get up at like five in the morning as hamster? a kid. Danger Mouse. Yeah, yeah, Danger Mouse, buddy. Yes. Like at five in the fucking morning on Nickelodeon, they would play Danger Mouse and Mr. Wizard. Okay, back yep. to back. How I, come, like as kids, we would wake up at like five in the fucking morning, and now I want to sleep till noon? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I I was always up late as a kid too. So well, your Saturday morning cartoons, you had to be up in time for Transformers. Yep. Transformers wasn't really a Saturday morning cartoon, though. That was an after-school or beginning-school right, cartoon. All right, all right fine. I fine. was always late to school because I was watching Transformers because it went from 7 to 7.30, and I had to walk to school after I was, that. I was late to my paper route because I would get home and watch the, the Disney afternoon block with oh, Tailspin, sure. Gummy Bears, Darkwing Duck, yeah. uh, DuckTales. Yeah, my Saturday morning cartoons really consist of more of, like, uh... Uh, Hanna Barbera stuff, uh, Herculoids. Um, I remember my dad used to work. My dad was a police officer, and he used to work the third shift. And so he'd be getting at home about six o'clock in the morning, and then about two hours later, I'd wake him up to make him watch Thundar the Barbarian with me. <laughs> yeah, you'd think he would have just stayed up two hours longer to cut the chase, but I guess the two-hour nap ain't worth nothing. <laughs> he, which he did, which you know, I greatly thank him. And that's Thundar is probably like one of my favorite properties back then which would be amazing if they would make into well it would probably be horrible but this day and age i think they could do it right and they they would just have to get acdc to do the theme song for thunder yeah thunder just struck. literally just change the mm-hmm. one sound in the opening of thunderstruck mm. just, <laughs> do, you, do you remember the the characters thunder <laughs> yeah it could yeah, like a little blob or something no he didn't have a blob. That was a Hercules. I know. That was Igu. Yeah, I don't give a uh, shit about Thunder because I'm not 50, old man. I don't know. I'm <laughs> just being mean. I actually don't know much of anything about Thunder except that he's not um, He-Man. Yeah, he was basically a rip, <laughs> kind of a rip off of He-Man. I mean, like one of the. I don't even know which one came first, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, the... I. Th- I want to say Thunder probably. I, came I would first. actually think Thundar probably came first and was a legit yeah. cartoon because Hanna Barbera made legit cartoons, and then other people were like, "Hey, let's do that except toys." It might have been around the the same time, but I I know that Thundar. Well, he carried around a sun sword. It was around Star Wars because he was he had a sun sword. Yeah. It had the it had the time there. Yep. Nineteen eighty. So now look up He Man. He Man's at least eighty three, eighty four. Yeah. I want to say, or maybe maybe eighty eighty two, but uh, Thunder idea. Thunder had two people with them. Basically, there was Ariel and Ukla, and Ukla was a complete Wookie ripoff, and Ariel is just a wizard. Nineteen eighty two, yeah, nineteen eighty two for the toys and comics, and eighty three for the television series. Yeah, so yes, yes, Thunder the toys and comics there. were actually really dark. I remember watching a a documentary that had like telling of the, like the Masters of the Universe how they came about. I'm double checking that I remember the right thing because one that I, I always forget that I watched, but that I did watch, was uh, yes, Brave Star. Uh, Brave Star. I do remember he was a Native American sheriff on Mars, <laughs> who who he would have like the strength of the bear or the eyes of the hawk or uh, the speed of a. Oh, it, it, he, it, he would he would say whichever power down. he needed, and he would gain that spirit. And then I love this picture. It said Brave Star at his sidekick slash mount because he had the he had a, a talking horse named Thirty Thirty. Yeah, I watched Brave Star. That's basically just BoJack Horseman, but blue. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> that, that looks really cheesy. <laughs> it is cheesy as shit. I guarantee if I bothered to look up an episode of Brave Star, it is the worst hot garbage ever. And I ate it up as a kid. Yeah, I tried watching I tried watching some uh, He Man old school He Man episodes and they do not stand up. And my my parents were right that, that show was crap, but I ate it up like no one's business when I was a kid. Um did not watch much of Thundercats as a kid though. I, there was uh we had cable, and they were not on cable. We were one of the rich families, that, yeah. or maybe it was the other way around. I watched a lot of Thunder. I watched Thundercats. Um, I loved Galaxy Rangers. That sounds really familiar too. I mean, Thundercats, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. I was more into He-Man though. And, and Galaxy Rangers was awesome though. 
I mean, you can be into He-Man and Thundercats. No, they were not on the same channel. They were on different channels. I think Thundercats <laughs> was on Fox. You were channel loyal. It wasn't on Fox. Fox didn't exist then. Uh, whatever channel they ended up eventually turning into Fox on, on the antenna dial. Yeah, I don't know. We had one of those awesome uh, antenna dials out for our house. Did it have the vice grip on it because you'd broken the dial off? Because <laughs> ours did. <laughs> no, we didn't do that. But I remember, no. I remember uh, like turning it, and then we always had like the set spots on there, and you just hear the antenna moving on the roof and like the the engine, or sure, the, the motor running, oh. yeah, <clears throat> so moving point in the right direction. And then, you know, plenty of ones that I watched when I was technically too old to be watching shit. Like, who didn't watch Gargoyles? I mean, come on. I didn't. Why not, man? Gargoyles legit. I didn't like watching Star Trek The Next Generation, the animated series. You should have watched Star Trek The Next Generation, the animated series. I didn't realize there was an animated series for The Next Generation. I watched the original. No, it's called Gargoyles. Gargoyles, the show, like, (laughs) almost literally everyone from Next Gen is in Gargoyles as a voice actor. Marina Sirtis is on there. Okay. Uh, Worf. Worf, Worf's uh, on Michael there. Dorn. Riker's on, on there. Data's on there. Yep. They're, they're all fucking on there. <laughs> like, they just took the cat. They just took the cast. Like, and we got you over here. You guys don't even have to get out of costume. Just come into this booth and talk a little <laughs> we'll bit. Just, we'll draw you as a monster. Go, go, go. <laughs> it was legit. Like, it was not a lot of cartoons. So, uh, Keith we David? have, like, ongoing... Keith uh, David was a main character in there, wasn't it? Yeah, K- Keith David was the main gargoyle, yeah. yeah. And so that's how you know good also when you got Keith David involved. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, having ongoing plot lines and pretty ballsy stuff because it opens with just genocide, basically. That's Disney, too, I think. Yeah, that was Disney Channel. Yeah. Uh, the important thing, if you ever do go, like, hey, I should watch Gargoyles, is there's, like, I think, like, three se- seasons or whatever, and then... They have a season that's called like the Goliath Chronicles, and and just stop, <laughs> stop, stop at it. The Goliath Chronicles. <laughs> there's either, there's a point where like things no no just stop. <laughs> oh. So uh, I have one other issue. Nathan and I discussed a little bit before the podcast. It's something that came up recently in news. We were talking about uh, well, Bill Cosby just got uh, expelled from the academy because of you know. Uh, things that he did because he's a rapist yes yes so interesting fact also expelled from the academy at the same time is roman fucking polanski also a a rapist rapist. (laughs) also a rapist yes also was supported by the 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 academy for a very fucking long time after his his i have been angry for the last 30 years about roman polanski and so sure it's a little late, but at least yeah. they're finally fucking like, oh. I just, I, I, I find it really obnoxious that it, you know, it's just now that they're finally taking action on him. Yeah. 1978 was when it occurred. It was 1978, I was saying, because he's made a lot of movies since then. Correct. Out of, out of the country, because yeah, he's been on the France. fucking run since yeah. then. Yeah, well, f- yeah, well, not even, they don't even have, he doesn't have to run. France has just been saying no. Oh yeah, yeah, to any kind of extradition, yeah. yeah. It's just, the it's, one time he almost got extradited was when he actually did go on the run, in as much as he left France to go to Switzerland, and they nabbed him. Oh, Switzerland yeah. does have extradition, yeah, uh, but they declined to do so, also, and then sent him back to France. Yeah, it just, I mean, good on good on the Academy for actually finally taking action on that. Bad on the Academy for sitting on it for fucking thirty years. What for? A four, Almost 40 50. Years. Yeah. No, almost 40. Well, yeah. almost 40, 40 years. 40 years, because 78, so it is almost exactly 40 yeah. years. Mm-hmm. But whatever, at least we finally reached a point where they, they're like, Fuck. I mean, you know, it where takes people, 40 years. Where people might is experience some form of consequences 40 years after the fact. What I mean, like, honestly, if, if, nothing, if nothing came about the Cosby thing, he, wouldn't, he, he would still be part of the Academy. I, I, I yeah. highly doubt that like part of their agenda this year was to expel him from the academy, and they're like, "Well, this is happening, so we we'll might as well just slip this in there too." Yep. And I and I, it's the other side of that. Who the fuck honestly cares about the academy? Uh, 
Yeah, it's true too. I love watching. I love the concept of the Oscars because I love movies. But I under- you said you, you, I said you love the concept. The, I hate yeah. watching. I even love watching the Oscars, but I hate watching because I don't give two shits about their opinion. And I can correctly predict every single winner every year because it has nothing to do with quality. Yeah, pretty much. It is. Yeah. It is thinly veiled lifetime achievement awards and political statements. Well, I mean that was also. The, I mean, I was. I, I kind of. I don't think I've watched the Oscars since um, Shakespeare in Love beat out Saving Private Ryan for the for the film of the year. Titanic beat L.A. Confidential. Well, yeah, there's that. Jesus too. fuck. L.A. Confidential is one of the best movies ever, and I know that's the second movie I've said that about, but that's fine. Many movies can be one of the best movies ever. That's why I said one of, not the. Um, but fucking a Titanic, and it's so telling because. You look at the 11 Academy Awards that Titanic got, and it is 10 purely technical awards. It's shit like best costume and best... And it deserved every one of those. I will not begrudge any of that stuff. Although best costume... The Academy Awards has a giant fucking hard-on for period pieces. Like, you're like, oh, look, you made a movie set in the 1920s, and you had your people wear suits that were from the 1920s. Here's your Oscar. But didn't uh, 12 Monkeys win best costume, I think? Ah. I didn't. Th- I can check on that, but interesting that you mentioned Twelve Monkeys because my example is going to be a Terry Gilliam one because yes. some shit like you know the Adventures of Shakespeare in Shakespeare Land where everyone wears Shakespeare costumes won Best Costumes the same year that the Imaginarium of Doctor Parnassus came out, and it's like fuck it, a man. Terry Gilliam films are so extremely amazing to look at. Their costumes. Ah, Fuck you, the Academy. I don't know. At least they're not as bad as the Grammys. No, I, I don't even care about the Grammys. Well, that's the story. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Jethro Tull fan, and Jethro Tull once won a um, Grammy yeah, for over Hard Rock Metallica. over Metallica. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. And the best, part, the, the best part of that was that they, that they had somebody random to accept it for them because none of them showed up to the show because they assumed it was an error that they were nominated for that category. And they well, it was Best Hard to, Rock. Well, I, I think it was. It wasn't like a metal performance. I think it was hard rock. It and was. It was it they would, didn't have metal. Yet. Exactly. No, it was, it was hard rock and heavy metal. Correct. It was a combo thing. Yeah. Heavy metal hadn't been at, at all, and then yeah. they they shoehorned it in as part of a shared category, and yeah. then it became its own category the next year. And so, in that brief window, Jethro Tull was harder metal than Metallica. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, Jethro Tull did not show up to the Grammys because they assumed that it was a typographical error that they were nominated in that category. Their music, you know, I mean, Aqualung is a decently hard song until well, until it isn't. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if if you put the that al- if, if you put that al- album as a as a metal as a metal album, I could get that. But the one they won the the, gr- the album they won the Grammy for was Crest of a Knave, which is not. Well, you know. I mean, people would be upset if you called Aqualung heavy metal, but... At least it has the the guitar at the beginning that's somewhat hard. Yeah. Yeah. And Locomotive Breath has a badass flute solo. It does. It does. And it's got yeah. a very good... It has a nice beat to it. I, yeah. I, think, I think all three of us unironically love Jethro Tull. But uh, it, it, I don't listen to him as much, but I, I, it's not something I'm going to be like, oh, <laughs> turn off the station. No. The whole Aqualung LP is really album good. Is Cross Eyed, yeah, Cross Eyed Mary, and yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, again, because I mean, as I said, I mean, between Aqualung, Cross Eyed Mary, and Locomotive Breath, you Funny. could call that album. You could call that album metal and get away with it. Correct. But you couldn't do that for Crest of a Knave, the you album that actually that actually won a heavy metal Grammy. The only reason I know Cross Eyed Mary is because Iron Maiden did a cover of it. <laughs> Also, if you haven't heard the um, 40th anniversary um, uh, remastered version of, of Aqualung, it is the, the whole album, it is really good. But uh, at least the Grammys made it up to Metallica by playing one of their songs when a different band won. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I show that to you? Or did I've, you, I've seen it. The yeah. Megadeth, <laughs> when Megadeth won, finally, yeah. finally won their Grammy. They, they fucking start playing Master of Puppets in the background. <laughs> Oh, I, lo- I love and that. And there's too. a brief awkward pause where you can tell the band's <laughs> like, like, wait. Uh, uh, keep going, guys. Producer says keep going. <laughs> All right, we're going to turn it into this hybrid of just metal. Yeah, it's just like there's yep. a pause and it keeps going and then it becomes generic. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't hide the opening five seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, it starts off. Wait, wait. <laughs> 
Yeah. It actually has that uh, almost a very audible, like when you were playing Guitar Hero and you fuck up a note yeah. on there, it has Ryan. a very, very <laughs> o- audible kind of like that in there as they're like, oh, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> pick up the face, let's uh, make it uh, thrashier. Yeah. Uh, Good times. And that's announcements. <laughs> Speaking of metal, I'm going to do it now because it's topical. My recommendation, yeah. which I I keep thinking I've already recommended it because I've recommended it various other places, but I've been I 99% sure I haven't mentioned it on here because last week I did Quiet Place and the week before that and here did I say year last week I did Quiet Place and the week before that we didn't record and the week before that I did something else. Anyway, Agretsuko. Did I mention Agretsuko? I don't know what it is. Agretsuko? I have no idea. What that is. Sanrio, the makers of Hello Kitty, have a show that is now on Netflix, the first season. It's a 10-episode season, I believe, and they're only like 15-minute episodes, so you can marathon that thing in a day. It's only a couple hours long. Sure. Um, Agret Suko from the makers of Hello Kitty, she is a red panda. She's your typical 25-year-old office employee, hates her commute to work, hates her boss, works way too hard for the little bit of money she gets, and every once in a while, she flips the fuck out and sings heavy like cookie monster screamy death metal okay and it's amazing i it's like if hello kitty hulked out and turned into pantera i oh uh, pantera I it actually is beyond that it is I, <laughs> yeah, so death it, metal but it, yeah. it's just but even beyond those little snippets of her singing death metal and and talking about lightning grant me your vengeance and murder my boss on the golf course hit him hit the club and kill him uh it's it's cute it's fun it lampoons a lot of stuff about hating your job and working in a cubicle and it's actually has plot development over the 10 episode season i like i like comedic death metal and that's i generally do not like the the style of music like i i can't just listen to it normally um but if it's in if it's a part of a show or if it has a concept and that works. More importantly, it isn't whole songs, because I also hate that style of metal, uh, but it isn't whole songs. It is 10-second punchlines to situations where she sure. flips out and the lyrics she sings are what we all think in those situations. Sure. There's like a Vine guy that used to do something like yeah. that with... Lemons. <laughs> <They were, laughs> no, no, not that. that that's easily one of the best, <laughs> the best Vines ever made is... Uh, is Will Sasso's vines though, but uh, Jake Holland, I think it is, has his own like, uh, like metalizing up something like some kind of poppy, and then puts in a little uh, napalm death into it. It's entertaining, but I, I do like comedic death metal. She's cute, and she gets angry. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, kind of like uh, she's cute, and then she gets angry. Sure, that's actually I think that's uh, Demi Borger, maybe. What? Demi Burger, Derber Burger. That's uh, it's one of the death metal bands. Oh, I, I was looking at the eye makeup. I think that's or Immortal. I think I know a lot about, uh, know enough about them, but I just I really don't like that style of music. Yeah, I don't know what it is. No, but Death Clock, on the other hand, for Metalocalypse, that's amazing. Um, yeah, but no, then, to, it's on Netflix. You should check it out. Then the other one though is is uh, Austrian Death Machine. Well, sure. Which unfortunately is is <laughs> unfortunate because the the creator of that. Uh, speaking is, of Roman Polanski, is a well no. He, Just speaking of the need to distance art from the creator of correct, the art. Correct. Correct. Yeah. He he did not drug and rape a thirteen year old girl. No, he just he just put a <laughs> he hired a hitman to kill his wife and his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> just he said just just, just. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. We well, are not going to get into a discussion about which is worse. <laughs> no. <laughs> Reverse. No, I, no, I'm not talking about which is worse, but that, that's really kind of made me not like the, his product. And Austrian Death Machine at the time was really cool. So he would take, he would take Arnold Schwarzenegger taglines, his, his mm-hmm. quotes for movies, and then build songs around them. So his songs like Get to the Choppa, you know, Rubber Baby Buggy Bumpers. I, uh, I I love the come on Cohagen, you got what you wanted. Give these people a ya, <laughs> spelled appropriately. Correct. <laughs> it's like a e y a. Yeah, and they're I mean they're actually really catchy and, and pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, and that's kind of the same thing about uh, Pantera as well. Like, fuck him. 
when you're when you're out celebrating with a bunch of friends the you know the life of your fellow bandmate who you know was tragically killed okay, uh, like e h y a r give <laughs> these people a r yeah <laughs> so the the Phil and Selmo thing is like he was he was off uh at a tribute show to uh Daryl mm -hmm. passed away was murdered on stage many years ago um but he was up there giving giving uh, Nazi salutes and yelling white power. Uh, excuse you. There's you, a simple explanation for that. Correct. It was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, it was all a misunderstanding. He was saying white power because they were drinking white wine backstage, and the white wine was giving them power. So he was up there just you know, telling them uh, white power, but it's it was the white wine that was... White wine. Uh, it's like Red Bull gives you wings. White wine gives you power. But he that was too many words to say. So he was just shouting white power while waving to someone in the back very emphatically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. That makes perfect sense yeah. when you think about it. Yeah, especially considering like his, his history of, of uh, being close to, the, close to the that side of things. Yeah. A Nazi. Yeah, a Nazi. Yeah. Here you go. So, so the Double Brutal album had such great songs as I Need Your Clothes, Your Boots, and Your Motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Let Off Some Steam Bennett. It's Simple If It Jiggles It's Fat. See You at the Party Richter. Who Told You You Could Eat My Cookies. <laughs> Put those cookies down! Yeah, but that's Which is not, people think that that is from Kindergarten Cop. That's actually from Jingle All the Way. Correct. When he calls home and Phil Hartman is eating his cookies. Ah... <laughs> uh, Come on, Cohagen, give these people a uh, who is your daddy, what does he do? Come on, do it, do it, come on, come on, kill me, do it now. Who will allow me to break the ice? Conan, what is best in life? And then the thing is, the lyric, it isn't just that the title is that. Like, the actual lyrics to the song incorporate these things. It's a good album. It's a shame that he hired someone to try to murder his wife and child. Was it total brutal or you had that's you had uh, the double, double brutal. brutal? I'm sorry, uh, did I say total. It's double. This is double yeah, brutal that yeah, I'm looking uh, at here. Double brutal is probably that's. I actually like that one better. Is I am a cyber, cybernetic uh, organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. Um, yeah, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Uh, you have just been erased. Also, speaking of Cookie Monster, Screamy Death it's Metal that I hate. Tumor. What's that? Local Madison area band Growing just released their newest studio album and had a very successful performance at the High Noon Saloon yesterday. And if you are into Cookie Monster, Screamy Death Metal, that's terrible. But, I mean, it isn't terrible. The genre's terrible, but this is good within that genre. Is that you should buy Growing's new album. Huh? Is that the official name of the genre? Is Cookie Monster, Screamy Death Metal? Pretty much, that's the official name of the genre. Uh, it's it's uh it's something something core, um, scream core. Yeah, or something. It, it's yeah. Point is, I hate it. But if you don't hate it, Growing has a new album, mm. and you should buy the album because they are a good band made up of good young gentlemen. Mm. So if we're done with the announcements, um, you haven't announced uh, a date for the Wisconsin Team Championship. Oh yeah, we 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 solidified a day for the WITC. I'm trying to vamp for Nate because we, we, he was not prepared to be looking up the date right now. So I'm uh, trying to pass some time here. So look at this pig. Oh, <laughs> audio listeners, you can't look at this pig, but they can listen to the they pig. They can listen to the pig. Pig doesn't talk, though. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. Instead of that, I'm going to go pick up a dinosaur. A dinosaur can make noise <laughs> for while Nathan's looking up the date. And hopefully he has a date by now. Uh, yeah. He does not have the date by now, oh. so... There we go. Are you ready? Yeah. I think it was in August. No. No? It was July 28th. July 28th? July 28th. That's July 28th. Holy f That's like two months. Three months from now. Yeah. yeah. Almost three. Yeah. Almost three, but that seems awful quick. July 28th, the WITC, it'll be at the Elks Lodge like normal. Yep. I accidentally was looking up the date for the ATC next year, and I'm like, January doesn't seem right for the <laughs> WITC. <laughs> That's what the delay was. Sure. Uh, you have I to thought come? I did pretty good vamping. You vamped. Vamp play got turkey. Couple, couple, couple.
Uh, but yes, July 28th, if I remember what I just said correctly after putting my phone down. I am so fucking fried right now. Ooh. I have had the worst goddamn week. Uh, I hear you. One of my supervisors at work just in the middle of his shift a few days ago just went, eh, and just walked out. Hmm. That was hmm. bad. Because there's supposed to be three people working in that department, and there was him and then somebody who works like six hours a week, so they barely count. And so now mm. there's fucking nobody. So the dude just left? Yeah, he just left. Did he come back? No, no, he just, like, left. He was done. <laughs> he, he didn't want to work anymore, so he just left. It was great as they called me to come in and close because he was the only, there was the LOD and then him. Uh, and, and so he left, and so there was literally only the LOD there, which meant that he had to shut the store down because you're not allowed to have the store open by yourself for safety yeah. reasons. So he's like, hey, I've called every other employee. Nobody else can. Can you come back and help close the store? Which is great because I'd worked a 10-hour shift already, and then I'd just gotten home, and luckily I've got a very short commute to work. Yeah. So it wasn't inconvenient at all to drive back to work. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's terrible. The, the Marshall, point is, Marshall July couldn't fill, it, fill in the bill. No, no. Marshall would have no interest or ability to cover that department. <laughs> July twenty eighth, WITC. I will probably be running it. Um, is Travis playing it this year, then? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's it's like his. It's there's somebody's birthday, either his wife or his son's. There was a thing, and I was like, so don't come. But Travis can't no, I, not I, come. I, no, I think he's. I think he's still coming. I know he's coming. It. I told him not to. Yeah, but he's, he's still coming because yeah. he's Travis, and he can't not. <laughs> so either he's gonna run it and I'll play in it, or I'll run it and make him not show up or kick him out as soon as he shows up. I haven't decided yet. I could be security. Sure. Dave and I. Will be I playing yeah, Dave. Well, well, Dave and I, we could play security, and we could be the Viking Viking <laughs> squad, and we could take take Travis out. We could Sean Eckert him right away. Oh, like okay. as soon as he walks into the room, well, metal bar to the knee. Two mice. No, I will be I will be playing in it, I and we need everybody to show up because it is an awesome event. Oh, that one's over there. Okay. This I have to brag for a exist. moment because I am defending oh, my is. championship. Ooh, I might play. I was going to make changes to my Rask list. And by changes, I mean one change. I was thinking about taking out Wrong Hand Snapjaw and trying uh, Brun and Lug because they're good and they're not in there. Wrong Hand Snapjaw do the whole we don't die because we just submerge in Starcross thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but man, counter charge plus return is such an aces combo. Especially since return I know, is I just... I really like counter charge. Yeah. And then with return, and, yeah. and return isn't even directly towards, mm -hmm. so you can countercharge something and then wander off in another direction mm -hmm. to like just surprise contest shit. It's it's not even just a towards. It's so towards. So lug, uh, when he when he returns, he has to return towards Brun, but he might have started like if they start. Sure, sure. Eat yeah. Sideways, you know. What I mean, he can he can charge from three o'clock to midnight and then end at ten. Sure, makes sense. If if Brun was at nine to continue the yep. visual, and and that's pretty cool. Yeah, I need to play more War Machine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I I need to only play in tournaments because since unretiring, I'm undefeated in tournaments and unfeated in uh, casual play. Yeah, that's really really weird. Or winless. Winless. No, I'm I'm unfeated. You're witless. I am witless. Do you do you have to go undercover as a as Amish? Also, yeah, and also one of those games. Witless is protection. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's a movie. No, witness is. Uh, oh, I thought yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh man, Harrison Ford. How many people developed a fetish for Amish women after that movie came out? Because <laughs> wow, did they sexualize that as a concept? It's like what Lolita did for schoolgirls, right? <laughs> oh Jesus. It is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it is. But you know, it's it's not a stereotype that we attach to you at all. Oh, not in a long time. Not in a long. That time running ever. gag's been gone for a while. Yeah, it has. I mean, running <laughs> gag. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Well, that it was a running gag. Oh, no, okay. Not yeah, that yeah, it was sure, true. Sure. Um, I'm no Roman Polanski. <laughs> at least for forty years. I've never been caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh in the announcement next week, the Academy kicks out Nathan Hoffman <laughs> or Gordon Tremesco. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Uh, so uh, I guess we should probably jump over to Zappy Grumbles. We yeah, have, do we tweets? have anything else to talk about? Have, yeah, there's, it's, Shane York did one on the Twitter. Yeah, I saw, I saw it. Yeah, okay, so, good. Then I'll close it. Yeah, look at that. I was on the ball already. I already had it going. I Woo! Had, had it. The woo! thing going. Woo! Did you see the thing that was Horton Here's a woo, and it, and it was just an elephant surrounded by a whole bunch of uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Flares. Flares. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I wish I saw that. I didn't see that. Seems awesome. Uh, so Shane York uh, asked us if uh, Mompak, are you excited or meh? Uh, for me, it depends entirely on um, how many people around here play. Sure, sure. I mean, are you are you? Uh, have you been checking out some of the the models in that? Do the models excite you at all, or is it just more of you're just you want to see if there if there's an audience in the area first? If there's, before. If there's an audience, if the game if if the game has a tight rule set and is playable competitively, yeah, I'll play because that's um, really I mean I, I mean honestly most of my focus lately has been uh, working on stuff for the Wisconsin Team Championship because that's the the next big event that I'm going to. Sure, sure. So, I have been focused on that. We um, had sort of a warm-up uh, team event in Iowa last week. Mhm. Mm and uh, the Who's the team? Was it you, Keith, uh, uh and Jake? And Jake? Okay. Yeah. We had a warm-up event in Iowa. It was a round-robin team tournament, and we swept all rounds, so I was happy with that. I wonder if it would be kind of neat to do a team tournament where you put everyone into pods like that, mm -hmm. make them round-robin. So you take four teams, uh, put them so they fight each other, so you're getting three rounds that way, and then take the, the top seeds out of there and then seed them in, a, in an actual tournament. That should work. For like the next day or something like that, yeah. I think it'd be it'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm a really big fan of uh, team tournaments, and um, I much prefer team tournaments to normal events. Sure. sure. And I mean, just uh, I mean, a lot of that is because I think it you, you I like the way you build lists and build team composition a lot better for team events because uh, solo events are a lot more. Uh, a lot more, I don't want to say random, but there's a lot more stuff. There, you you have a lower tolerance for screwing up you, in in list design. Whereas correct. in a team of in a team event, in a team event, a you don't have to you you don't have to prepare for every single thing. And so you can, if you run into a horrible matchup, either during. Um, during a player assignment during your team, um, either you try to dodge that or you just um, get thrown under the bus and yeah. um, hope your other teammates have more advantage matchups. You have a little bit more control over your fate in the yeah. event as, as compared to where you just show up and pray to God that you know your two lists can handle whatever's out there. Yeah, Cause, yeah, because yeah. that's yeah, because that's a, that's one of the things I think hamstrings a lot of um, pairs is just that you have pairs that are perfectly fine lists, perfectly I good can't to play, find a meme. and just have this small number of lists. It's like okay, if I run into this, I lose, and um, I like that in a team event you can dodge that to some extent. Mm -hmm. That there's a lot more. That there's a lot more. There's there's a lot less. You have to win every <clears> game, and you have to be prepared for every game. It's just most. Mostly, you have to be really strong into a lot of things, as opposed to as opposed to win everything. Mm -hmm. I think it ends up being better and creates better games and better matchups. So I love team tournaments. I'm really excited for the Wisconsin team tournament, and um, more listeners should show up and um, play us. I'm I am very excited for Monster Apocalypse. <laughs> I was just about to try to jump into it in the same way that you were. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I will definitely buy the living shit out of Monster Apocalypse. I loved 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 it so much. It's one of my favorite game mechanics in a miniatures game. The the tactical flexibility of the dice pool. It was such a cool risk reward doing a big attack using a bunch of white dice versus if you leave if you just use one white die and use all your boost dice and red dice you can mm -hmm. do multiple activations in a row like so much tactical flexibility with those dice pools plus you were body slamming each other into fucking buildings and they were catching on fire mm -hmm. and it was cool were you body slamming i, I remember i was body being... slamming you weren't no i just i remember <laughs> people taking their 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 stupid uh zor maxim just shooting oh. people into buildings with spikes and we and didn't run into that bad here uh uh, most of the people here in Epic Madison, Nate, yeah, 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 Epic Nate did, yeah. but we had a lot because, yes, I mean that's true. But it wasn't like our meta. We were fortunate enough not to just have 
everybody was playing that. Sure. Like, yeah. people were playing the models they lo- thought were cool. Yeah. You know, you were playing the Cthulhu's. I was playing fucking uh, dinosaurs and, and gorilla men and Martians. Yep. You know, we were playing stuff that was cool, and there was a lot of power attacking. Slams especially, but yep. uh, it's I, such a good game. I, I mean, I'm definitely... I'm disappointed in the fact that I can't use the stuff that I've already used that I already purchased and have. And I, I do know of some people in our area that have specifically said, they're like, F, Mom Pac, it, it, I'm, I'm never going to that game again. And it, it Really? I'm surprised by that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's, there's people I've talked to about that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not in that, that boat. I mean, that game was, was a lot of fun to play. Uh, I agree it with still you. It is, the, but <laughs> the mechanic of it, uh, I'm very surprised when Monster Apocalypse went away that they didn't try to adapt that into something else because it was it's it's a really neat mechanic. the The board control was kind of neat too, where you had you had teleportation parts on there where you could bring in your troops. It, it's it's just a really cool game, uh, and I'm very surprised it didn't. And as for not being it. able to use your old stuff, I mean, it isn't tournament legal, but I can tell you that if there are, you know, like the 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 howitzer apes, okay, one sure. of the units for the giant monkeys was was to like twenty foot tall apes carrying howitzers as side guns, sure. which is fucking cool. If those are a unit in the game. And somebody wanted to play against me on a casual night, and they had old school pre-painted plastic howitzer apes. Okay, I'd be. Fine I don't with, care. I would honestly <laughs> be fine if it, let's say if we, you know we start running local events for it. Definitely gets hard because there are so many fucking miniature games out there right now trying to fit in. Like we couldn't run a single War Machine event in the entire month of May uh, at Pegasus Games. For, on Saturday because yeah. it was just so many booked other up things, yeah. all weekend. Yeah, all there was weekend. an event today, but nobody turned out because it was on Sunday, and Sundays are terrible, a terrible days Correct. to run events. The uh, store is also closing two hours earlier yeah. nor- than normal on uh, yeah. Sunday. But uh, but like for, for even for a tournament, let's say if I'm running a Monpac tournament, I would be more than happy to allow somebody to bring in, you know, if unless have an effort into it. Like they would pick up some stuff – and then use some of the old stuff. I'd sure. be happy with that. Like, don't just bring all of the old stuff, but, you know, and, and maybe, like, I don't know, maybe not the monsters because they're the core piece. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I understand there's a slippery slope there. But, like, technically, you, you buy the, um, the Iron Kingdom's uh, Unleashed, uh, like, adventure set, whatever, yep. and it comes with a bunch of Pharaoh. Okay, yep. if you want to use one of those guys, those the razor boards. The razor boards in that box are technically not tournament legal in hordes. Correct. Correct. They are razor boards. Yep. They're just plastic razor boards. They use the same mold. They're the same size, but they're technically not tournament legal. It was the same. Who thing. gives a shit? It goes the same thing with the Undercity's uh, uh, crow's cutthroats. Yep. If you want to, if, if you didn't want to assemble your crow's cutthroats and want some nice pre-assembled cutthroats, you can just get those. I mean, the, they're the not old, tournament legal. They're not tournament legal because they're part of that set. But honestly, if you would take them, chop them off those those uh, plastic bases, put them on normal privateer ba- or right. normal uh, normal bases, <laughs> nobody's gonna fucking. Tend and to that's them. the effort, right? Because the base is the issue with the 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 pre molded ones. Because the bases are technically like a millimeter smaller or something absurd like that. Uh, no, I think the they, they are, also are marked as well. They're not. They're well, not, I don't mean they're, they're smoother. The reason it's, why. They oh, aren't yeah, yeah, tournament correct. legal. The functional reason that they aren't tournament legal isn't just the privateer wants to force you to buy models. They actually are on different, slightly different size bases. They're so they, they actually, for that, that has a game effect. Yeah. So that I understand. So like chopping off those bases and putting them on real bases removes any reasonable objection to using those models because mm-hmm. now they just are gross cutthroats. Yeah. Same thing with Monpoc. If yeah. somebody took those Howard's rapes and broke them off of the, the pre-made square that has all the iconography and mm-hmm. put them on whatever size base... The game's gonna They're use. They're gonna be clear bases, from my, what I understand. Oh, but I mean, the, the scale of the models are a little a bit bigger. For it, this that's too. the issue. It's like, but again, whatever, man. Just come yeah. play a fucking game. Yeah. I mean, sure. You know, if you're gonna go to Gen Con and play an official Monpoc tournament, you won't be able to. But if you're playing in Andy's basement, I don't give two fucks if you have an old Howitzer base, an old Zor Maxim. I don't care if you bring nothing but an entire case of old school Monpoc and play by the new rules. Let's have a game. Yeah. Yeah, there's, it's 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 an amazing game. Like I said, it, it, I, I'm very surprised that wasn't adapted into like War Machine Epic or something like that, and just have 
uh, colossals running around little, fighting little other little people units, and, yeah. and using units with like the little battle engines and that. It, fuck. Yeah, I'll be all in day one. All yeah. fucking in. I will buy everything available for... I, and I don't know how they're doing the waves, if they're going to do waves like they did the first time. I don't know if they're just keeping the factions and doing new models. I'm not sure... I haven't followed all the exact details of the Mon Pocket Nons. I don't know. Have you at all, David? Not really. They haven't really said that much, yeah. other than it's really coming at Gen Con. Is right. Really the big thing. I just, I'm curious if it's going to be the same initial five factions, mm -hmm. and if they're going to release all the exact same models, and then those factions will be done, and then they'll do the next five factions within the same five agendas, you know, exactly how they did the first time. And then once they get to where they were, they'll just continue with that pattern and then get us five more factions so each agenda has three factions and continue that original pattern or if it's gonna be more like war machine where they just have the factions and release more and more stuff for them i think i think uh from my understanding for some of the rumors i heard and i'll probably be wrong so this will not be the first time they're wrong on this podcast but i think the factions are are expanded so you will have the sun syndicate i think in the same they're basically good guys, bad guys, in a, in right. a way. Uh, so they have the Sun Syndicate, and they'll have guard models for you to be able to choose from sure. um, for your your side. So I think the agendas are, are staying... or I, it's Basically, there's going to be more options, I think, av available. Rather than just like, mm -hmm. I'm just playing Cthulhu. Right. Although, remember, with the original game, you could play anything. Yes, it just cost more to... Anything to, that wasn't your faction, wasn't your agenda, correct. anything that wasn't your agenda costs double. Yeah. And so the Martians could bring along fish people, no problem. Correct. But if I wanted a Shadow Sun Syndicate unit, I had to pay double for it. Correct. Correct. And the way the game was built, too, I mean, there was enough, there was enough, uh, you know, uh, balancing... That's, that's the word I was looking at. There was enough balancing where it didn't meet, make it, so like I had to get that one Cthulhu model onto my team. Even, and he is worth yeah. even having at double price. I mean, and the, more importantly, there wasn't a model that everyone wanted to pay double for. There wasn't right. like the Iris 2 situation where everyone wanted that fucking model. Or the, but uh, you would build a list and you're like, you know, that one gorilla has synergy with this list so it's worth it yeah you know and and that was a cool option to have like just think about that in war machine like if you built a, a signar list and you're like you know what that one grimkin model would be really good so i'll pay double point cost for it yeah you kind of need to have for an allies or some kind of ally contingent that you could throw into theirs well the thing with monpok was it was literally anything there was no yeah. restrictions to that yeah. i would be curious how that would work in a tournament for for uh, War Machine, yeah, to to run it as an allies, yeah, just run it or as maybe, you can maybe you like can a put quarter ex more expensive or something. No, fuck you, double, just double. <laughs> Better be worth it. Maybe fifty percent more. I don't know. Maybe yeah. we'd have to check, but I don't know. Fifty at fifty percent more, I would take Choir in every single list. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That is true. At double, well, I would take choir, choir in a lot of lists. Choir yeah. is one of those that I think we were we were planning on doing a. Uh, a Frankenstein list event. I don't think yeah. they actually ever mm. made it. Um, but yeah, I remember everybody local was talking about how they're all going to take wire. I mean, it could be something like double uh, units cost at least five, but no more than ten more points or something. So things like choir get comparatively Attacks. more expensive. But uh, yeah, I mean, there'd be a minimum slide. And, and then wait, like at some 20 point unit doesn't become 40, 40 points. 40 points, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's what I was, I was sitting there thinking. I was like, oh, I, I want to take the... Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Whatever. I'd yeah. figure out. But it would be interesting. Yeah. All right. I'm sure Andy's buying Monpock also. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't yeah. even get that vibe, yeah. I'm definitely picking up Monpock. I will um, probably be all, be all in just with, with the number of people playing. Yeah. Sometime we should meet up at like Pegasus or something, and I can run you a demo with the old stuff because yeah. I'm sure the new stuff will be ninety percent similar. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be very close. I'm hoping that the it's pool mechanic. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hoping that it's it's grid based. Um, I think it is. I think they said that much. Yeah, it, as long as it's grid based, because I, I I am starting to really like miniature games that have very very tight measurements. 
Um, I think that's kind of the only thing that's kind of stopping me from playing a lot of War Machine now is is his tape measures. They bug the crap out of me sure. now. I play enough of Guild Ball where I'm, a, I'm able to lay down rulers onto the table all the time, put down proxy bases, and make sure I got very accurate measurements. And my opponent does the same thing. Uh, we used to be able to do that in War Machine. <laughs> we did. And then Jason Souls decided he didn't like it. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. Fuck Jason Souls. I just got the notification of uh, my Facebook memory of me posting uh, a Morton Joe <laughs> with everyone, the big uproar about, because this was CID yeah. 2017 yeah. last year, was, uh, yeah, with Morton Joe saying, Don't grow you know, addicted to, to your <laughs> measurements and proxies. widgets. <laughs> proxies. Fucking eight. Uh, yeah. Let, let, let's clumsily solve a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, it's everyone was so happy with pre-measure and open. Like, not everybody. Everybody who wasn't an annoying shitbag was so happy about the ability to just pre-measure. Well, right? I mean, I think mostly. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, everybody. Everybody that wasn't obnoxious loved pre-measuring. I mean, I think Haley Three is what is what created a sour Basically, taste. Playing or, playing your entire turn out in imagination, and then it's your clock. Yeah, your clock, yeah. if you want to play your turn twice, I agree with that. Go ahead and clock yourself, yeah. right? It's your clock. It's the people who did proxy bases and then said, okay, and now we agree I do that. No, no, no. no. You measured all your proxies. Now measure it again. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. your point. <laughs> yeah. Like... Although the, the final rule for that, the, the you can have two, you can have two, um, you can have two widgets out, and then you have to take, you have to, you can place a third one, but you immediately have to pick up one of the existing. It's it's a it's, it's okay. A, it's a better compromise. I mean, but it, it for me when I was like when I'm playing Guild Ball, it's mm. it's just you know I, yeah. I'm measuring and putting things out, and I don't ever have to touch a tape measure again. It is War Machine. It's it's not as as clean because not not saying clean. I'm not trying to disparage it at all, but yeah. I'm just saying the the amount of widgets that you can use for for lines and that there's so many more models on the table. It's hard for you to get those super yeah. accurate. Well, that, yeah, in. honestly, I mean that's the main reason I use tape measures is because I've got a set of I've got a set of widgets that I that I've got specific widgets to do the important yeah. measurements for my Harkovich list. But so sometimes they don't the, the density of models. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. But I mean I've got the I've got the widgets for the runs and the for the the runs and the tramples to cloud walls and stuff for all the stuff I do, and it makes it fast and accurate to yeah. lay stuff out. True story. Yep. More so, people should do that. It's awesome. Hmm? More people should do that. It's awesome. What, have have widgets for, for their movements? Yeah. Yeah. Also, this is the other thing, if there are any aspiring game uh, game designers um, in game designers listening, um, if you are describing movement on a tabletop, do it front to back, not front to front, because it is a lot easier to measure to measure and um, place widgets for um, if you if all of your movement values are in front to the front and just back. let everything get that little extra movement every time whatever yeah yeah oh so you, you're talking about uh, so something with a one inch base yeah. in war machines if it's speed six just make it speed five and then it's going the same distance you can just measure from the front of it to the back of it yeah okay. Because it'll have gone six inches, because it's the five inches plus its own yeah. base size, or or make it so that uh, so that the units of the base size, the units of the base size and speed are comparable. Because um, when your base sizes are in millimeters and your movement, <laughs> your movement yeah. is front to front in inches, um, you basically have to you basically have to generate. I mean, it's 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 a matrix of widgets for movement as opposed to just a, as opposed to just a list of um, a list of distances. You're trying to figure out like if somebody has reach over the top of another model because it's in inches, and you know, like well, even just being able to put down a rigid, you know, you can't take this model, put down a rigid stick and say he moved to here because now there's a stick under him yeah where yeah. if you measure from front to back you just have him move to there no yeah and i mean part of the problem i mean part of the problem with uh, i mean for for war machine is a i mean i have i one of the the big ones i have is a 12 inch is a, a 12 Whoa. Inch oh sorry yeah i just heard one of the big ones i have is a 12 inch and i was a yeah. Go on. One of, the, one of the big widgets I have is a is a twelve inch run, but and it I've, it is literally labeled twelve inch twelve inch large base front to back or front to back, because the a twelve inch run for a medium size or a smaller base would be a different would be a different length because sure. of it. Sure. And 
because the base sizes are in millimeters and the movement is in inches. I also can't just can't just come out and say, okay, this one is 10 inches, and so it's a 12 inch a 12 inch run for a for a base that's two inches because a none of the bases are two inches. Yeah, and um, all of the the actual measurements are like four uh, are 12 inches minus um, 50 millimeters. Sucks. That is a true statement. Yep. All right, so we should probably switch over to recommendations. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations? You already did. A I already did a recommendation. Right. I have one I'm working on. I've only mm -hmm. watched one episode yet, and I'm not sure it's good or not. What, what episode? Mm -hmm. Our earlier conversation. For our earlier conversation, I will heartily recommend um, listening to the 40-year 40, 40 anniversary um, remastered version of Jethro Tull's Aqualung. Great it album. Is a, it is a great album, and um, the, the, the remastering... Um, Brings out a lot of things without without seriously changing without seriously changing things. It sounds better the the forty year anniversary version. So if you're familiar with it, if you're familiar with the album, check out the um, forty year version. It is one of the few remasters I actually really like. If you're not familiar with it, listen to it. It is a fantastic album, and in my view, one of the classic um, rock albums. That is true. I'm supposed to give a give a. A recommendation. I don't. I don't have any really that I can think of right now. I. I. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll stall for you with a, a tentative. It's not official. I might come back. A fit. I will come back to this next week with either official recommendation or recanting. Um, but uh, Korean variety shows are amazing, as we've previously discussed with things such as The Genius. On Netflix, they currently have uh, one called Busted. Uh, which they release two episodes every Sunday. The first ones just came out, or every Saturday maybe? Yes, Saturday, because the first ones just came out yesterday. Uh, they're hour and a half long episodes, so it's three hours every uh, two weeks. But, uh, oh, Into the Badlands is a good recommendation from chat. Anyway, it is w like watching a half dozen Korean celebrities solve a murder mystery dinner party with escape room puzzle elements. Mm. Uh, it was very interesting. The only I've only watched the first episode so far because, like I said, they're hour and a half, and so it's a bit of a time investment last night, and, and I worked early this morning, so I didn't stay up for the second episode. But it was very entertaining. A lot of the stunts were good. They were, they were funny, the vamping and everything. Um, it is dubbed in, or it is subtitled, if that bugs people, but grow up, learn to read. But uh, the only reason I'm hesitant is that this first episode very obviously had scripted mm -hmm. portions um versus just being an actual like they didn't know what was going on and they solved the mystery is whatever and so i'm curious if that's just because it was the pilot and they were setting it up for future episodes so i'm going to watch the second episode tonight after uh, i watch westworld and uh next week i will let you know if my uh what's the word i'm looking for reservations are correct or if it is good was that long enough andy that's a pretty long stall yeah um, my recommendation is one that I thought I would never say. Uh oh, stabbing yourself in the eyes. No, well, it, it, some people might uh, think that you, you should do Could this rather worse. than watch this. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead, oh. <laughs> the newest season, is actually really good. <laughs> it's it's uh it's scary. I think it's it's got. Like a ninety some percent on Rotten Tomatoes for the new the new season. I mean, it's been steadily getting better, but this season alone has has taken it to a whole new a whole new level. There, I think like almost every episode so far this season has been a hundred percent on on Rotten Tomatoes, which is scary to think because that show was it's it was on par with with uh, well. You, 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 if you're going to walk off forever now, if we're almost done with the podcast, sure. a Z Nation. <laughs> I mean, it, it, in, this, in the terms of, like, they're trying well, no. to make a really quality I will product. I will agree that Fear the Walking Dead and Z Nation were equally good shows. It's just one of those shows knew it sucked. Correct. <laughs> and Correct. that's critically important. <laughs> yeah. I like Z Nation because Z Nation's like, yeah, I suck, and... <laughs> Yeah, right now it's... Uh, I'm at least going to suck interestingly. It's a uh, 96 on Rotten Tomatoes with a 92% audience like score. Wow. Which is, which, like I said, is that, that show was pretty much the... Uh, yeah. uh, it's almost better than the last one. Yeah. There's 
the three episodes, 100% 80, 86 and 100%. Wow. Well, I'm a, I was just going to click not interested. <laughs> oh, not on my phone. But, yeah, it's only three episodes into the season, though, but it's uh, it could get worse, though. <laughs> it's always a chance. Well, yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty much it for our podcast. We're going to try to see if we can set up uh, another poll uh, soon here to try to do the uh, figure out what kind of movie pain train we're going to do. So we've got to figure out a quick time to do that. I think probably even maybe the maybe an afternoon before we podcast. Mm. Or a Saturday might be better. I like drunk faction reviews. Drunk yeah, faction, well, that yeah. happens anyway. Yeah. That's something we should definitely start, yeah. start rolling those out eventually. I can get caught up on minions and convergence. Let me choose a faction. So I was doing Kador, but I'm so far behind Kador. I don't have, I don't play any of the Armor Core stuff. <laughs> and they just had a CID, so you'd have to refresh yourself. Well, th- yeah, they just released all the CID yeah, stuff. CID kind of right. sucked, though. Yeah, yeah, it's got some ridiculously it? awesome models. Oh, well, it's got. I mean, the, the I Armor Core like stuff. Polished is, yeah. up the Man of War stuff to made it not terrible. The, the Man of War stuff. Is, the Man of War stuff is good, but um, they nerfed Marauders and Juggernauts, which showed up in eighty percent of. Kador lists. So Maybe that's why they nerfed them. Yeah, but I mean, it's now that all of those lists are worse, and um, Kador was the Kador was generally considered a, on the on the bad on the bad side of faction balance. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I, I, there was a problem with Kador Jack selection, and I, given the overall performance of Kador, I don't think you can you could really claim that the problem was that Kador jacks were too good. It was just that only these two jacks were good. Yeah. Only these three jacks were good because honestly, I think Kodiaks are now the best uh, the best you know, jack um, Kador has. Yep. All right. So I guess we'll we'll call it next week. Nathan's got his housewarming thing, and then we'll nope. hopefully yeah. record after that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. We just bought a new bed for the guest bedroom, and we just were cleaning out the storage locker and found a uh, hideaway bed. So now I have a queen and two twins in various guest bedrooms. And point is, there's plenty of room for people to get drunk and crash in my house Saturday night. Uh, Enough room to make some uh, puke angels that Nathan will find, you know, a week later. Yeah, please do so in the basement. It's not wood. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll catch you next week.